Welcome once again on a beautiful Monday, October 28th, 2024, where I, the Halloween Phantom, present this show, Filthy Four Daily, alongside his co-host, a man who has been once again named with the help of the illustrious AI machine. I give to you Brian the Banshee, Alvarez the Accursed, the Pumpkin Prince, Spooky Alvarez, Alvarez the Haunted, Brian Trick or Treat Alvarez, the Spooky Smark, the Ghost of Grappling, the Ring Reaper, Brian Boo Delicious Alvarez, Brian Freaky Deaky Alvarez, the seductive spirit, the scandalous specter, the chilling chat, the nightmare narrator, the podcasting poltergeist, the howling host, Bootista himself, Brian, the supernatural Alvarez. Are you listening to After Dark or why did we go from whales to poltergeists? When are we going on our UFO adventure? You know? Hmm, interesting. You were all excited for a while there. And then it was just over. Yeah, well, I had to do a few shows with you. And I thought better of it. Al Bundy versus Big Bad Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay over there? What are you Are, talking do you about? have Tourette's? What's I, happening? I, I just saw the text you sent me, you idiot. You already forgot no. what text you sent me like five minutes ago? No, I know That's exactly the what text I sent you, buddy. Golly. Hey, before before we even get into Is that who else, I think it is, his referee? Oh, for sure it is, yeah. Oh, my God. I think we should review that. We'll review it next, next week. week. Just remind it, me before, like, five minutes before the show starts, which you normally do. Hey, are we going to do a sponsorship snack down? You got six minutes. Maybe you could run to the Wendy's or whatever. Huh. Or the night before. Hey, I'll, I'll text him at 1130, see if he wants to get a, a, a whatever the hell was, Monster Energy. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, 1130, I'm going to have a Monster Energy. It was like six o'clock. That'll really Jesus. help me sleep. Why don't you go check the no, time No, it wasn't. Stamp there was again. no way it was six o'clock. What time was it? Six nineteen. Oh yeah, Get I can't have caffeine out. after you said six. said eleven o'clock. Well, that's when I you saw put- it. I was busy working when you sent it. Big difference. Kids aren't supposed to have caffeine, anyways. So anyway, what's the point of all of this? Hey, you know what? I want to talk about SmackDown. <laughs> Go, hold on. I thought SmackDown was like an awesome show. I actually, my notes say it was fantastic. Yeah, fantastic edition. Yes, but but. Before we get to that, yes, because I want to make sure people know bad news, right? Unfortunately, yesterday Chris Bay was injured. He, one half of the ABC in TNA was injured in a match with the Hardys, and I believe had a, a, like an emergency neck surgery. Yes, from what I understand. So obviously not good. Chris is a guy who's local to Las Vegas and. Besides that, really one of the best young wrestlers in the world. You know, multiple time uh, Impact TNA tag team champion, and um, it's it's really rare to kind of see somebody get injured and then undergo a neck surgery so quickly. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers and anything else uh, go out to Chris Bay, and as should yours, and ho- hope for a speedy recovery for him. Yeah, I don't know anything besides what Tom said. There were there were two injuries actually. The TNA tapings yesterday. Vikingo did yeah. I think a dive. And- Vikingo did a like a torneo, and if he didn't blow out his ACL, I would be extremely surprised. Because well, it was definitely he, his knee. The way he landed, he essentially collapsed in a very similar manner. Um, the way he landed, kind of like to how I did in the UFC when I actually tore my knee apart so uh it kind of like went internally and uh his body went over the back of it so that didn't look good and then uh obviously you know that's one thing but a bad neck injury uh, yeah what was what what happened with chris bay all all i all i heard yesterday (sighs) was he was also stretched out and uh then i heard this morning about the neck surgery but i didn't even hear like what what happened what spot it was like anything i believe it was a a tag team match um against the Hardys. Um, and they had done a TLC match. 
I think. Yeah, they won the, the tag titles in the, the TLC before. match the night before. Yeah. yeah, the night before. So, and he made it through that match uh, unscathed. But I think he took a neck breaker from Matt Hardy and just landed wrong. Uh, they, from what I have read, they went to the finish. Like Jeff Hardy hit a a leg drop or something off the second, uh, and then they ended the match. And then Chris Bay was stretchered out. But mm-hmm. like I said, it's it's really rare that you hear somebody have a surgery so so quickly so well yeah know. that's probably not very good and no. and no one seems to really know anything and they're keeping it quiet so i don't think that's good news at all so obviously all the best to chris bay friends and family everybody at impact and hopefully a speedy recovery to whatever it is well we've got uh smackdown and also anything you want to add for the ufc lawsuit may as well do that uh yeah well actually after uh, it was probably during the time that i was doing the show with you and dave on um wednesday night i i received a message from the council that were basically they just said like hey we thought you did a good job on ariel talking about the about the lawsuit and you'll actually make more than what you've previously thought so really yeah a little bit of a bump so i guess my math Hasn't been that good. Uh, but for those of you that... Well, would you like not... to tell us the number you're estimating? 175. Now, that's if is, is that if every single person like sends their address in? I believe so. So it's possible you could get up to 200. Uh, who knows? I mean, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, for those of you that don't know, uh, this long-time 10-year lawsuit between Kung Lee and Zufa was took a big step towards being settled last week on Tuesday at the court here in Las Vegas that I went to, I attended. There's no one there except for the lawyers and like 10 people. Mark Ratner was one of them. Uh, Josh Gross, me. So very few people in attendance know what went down, but um, the judge did give a preliminary approval to the UFC settlement. So, $260 $260 million after court fees going to 1,200 fighters that fought between 2010 and 2017. Um, and that'll start being paid out um, if this is given a final approval in February. That'll start being paid out towards the end of next year. So look forward to Wrestle Crank. Oh, yeah? Am now. I going to be on the show? I want to be a referee. I don't want to work. All right. I had the weirdest thing happen this weekend. I don't want to waste people's time on Observer Live, so I'll do the quick version here. So I was getting like into the car on Saturday, and my freaking knee, like, just, I don't know what, man. And it hurt so bad. And, like, I couldn't, I could barely stand. I couldn't straighten my leg. It was like everything that I'd done for the last six weeks or whatever since I last heard it, completely undone. I was so mad, and like I had to, I had to drive, and it was just absolutely, it was killing me. Like I wanted to cry. It hurt so bad, and I ended up, my buddy and I were going to go to the mall, the steakhouse, and so I got there early, and I was like, I'm just going to try and walk it off. And I'm just, like, hobbling through the mall for, like, an hour, back and forth. And I keep having to sit down, and I'm like, oh, my God, just murderous pain. So, you know, we had dinner. I ended up going home. I I can barely even get up the stairs. I can't do anything. And I'm so frustrated. I'm so mad. And so, like, there's there's this thing that I've been doing to try to, you know, kind of do the— stretch out the range of motion where I try to like slowly sit back and sit on my heels and then I kind of go into down dog to straighten it and then I slowly sit back on my heels I'm like man I don't know I don't even know I could do this I, I gotta at least see if I can if I still have that range of motion so like I get on all fours and I just I slowly it takes like a minute to like get halfway back and then I gotta take a break I'm like, I'm going to go a little further. I can sit further back. And finally, I can, like, sit on my knees. And I'm like, okay, well, I can still do that at least. So then I kind of move forward in the down dog, and I kind of stretch it out. And it's like, I can barely straighten it. It's just, it hurts so bad. And I'm like, okay, 
I'll do one more and then I'm done. And so I like take my time. I sit back. I end up sitting on my heels again. And I just sit there for a while. And I'm like, why does this hurt so bad? Like, what did I do? And then I start to move back to down dog. And as I'm going from my knees to like the down dog position, it suddenly goes pop. And I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck did I do now? But there's like that brief moment where I, it's just, I'm just full of fear. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck? Like it doesn't hurt anymore. And like, I went back and I went back to like down dog and it didn't hurt at all to straighten it. And then like I stood up and I'm still like totally gun shy to stand up because I think it's going to hurt. And I like stand up and it doesn't hurt. And then I kind of start walking and at first I'm like limping, but then I'm like, what am I limping for? It doesn't hurt. And like, I don't know what the fuck I did, dude, but like something, I don't know if I had dislocated my kneecap or like something, but apparently I like got it out of where it was supposed to be and like going back and forth, I like popped it back in and the pain was totally gone. And it was like a complete, I mean, I was walking around the house. I was walking up and down the stairs. I was like, I don't know what I did, dude, but so like, I mean, I got to still go for that MRI, which was supposed to be yesterday, but they canceled it again. So it's this coming Sunday. But man, I can't even tell you the relief I had when whatever I did to it, I managed to undo somehow. And now it's like working fine again. I like did a workout this morning and everything. Oh my God. I don't know, man. I was like, fuck. So that's the story. I still have no diagnosis, but... I did something, and then I fixed it somehow. <sighs> now, with that great relief, let's talk about SmackDown. Can I charge you for that therapy session? Bro, I'm so full of joy. Through? Hey, fuck you. You hurt your knee. If you would have hurt your knee at UFC and then you did something and fixed it, I'd have sat here and listened to the entire thing, and I would have congratulated you afterwards. I wouldn't have sat here and went, oh, Wow. You got hurt, and then you didn't get hurt again. whoop de fucking do Let's talk about BKFC fucking Denver, some shit nobody cares about. Anyway. Actually, uh, now that you mentioned that, I might as well just get this sponsorship snack down out of the way. Because I'm officially going to start now the energy drink power rankings, Brian. Right here. So you Which want to one talk, is that? You want to talk about... This is the Monster Ultra. Mm. Zero Ultra. You want to talk about BKFC. Well, they are sponsored by one of my favorites, Bucked Up Energy. Oh, fuck. Which I will get some Dude, next you're week. Dude, you're going to die drinking all this shit. They got, they got this Bucked Up Miami Vice flavor. Tastes like fucking Molly. It is so good. I take two Excuse sips. Me. I start telling everybody how much I love them. It is. Is awesome. there alcohol in it? No, it's energy drink. Just like this white monster, monster, one of the sponsors of the UFC, which had a huge show this pack w past weekend. One of the best UFCs that I've seen in a long time. UFC 308, the fighter of the year, Ilya Topuria, knocked out Max Holloway. One of the all-time best. KOs in history, a double spinning back fist to the future. But the star of the show, as always, the monster, baby. Let me take a sip. You've had some of this before, haven't you? Yeah, do you yours and then your I'll thoughts? do mine. Do yours first. Oh. Man. Now, I have never, you could tell because I'm on this planet, I have never gone to the heights of having ascended up into the heavens, up into the clouds, and been able to experience something as amazing as like a, you know, what I, Brian, what, I, what I'm getting at is what I think this tastes like. Is an orgy with the angels. How would you stop? It is so good, so delicious. I don't know if it's citrus. 
I don't know what the flavor is. I really don't care. This, this is fantastic. The number one, the number one energy drink on the planet as of today, right here, White Monster Ultra. Why don't you take your $200,000 and we'll go in together and we'll start our own energy drink. Filthy energy. Make it taste however you want. Citrusy. Little bit Mo- of orange. Molly. Some maybe. pog. Some tobacco. We'll talk off air. I think we can make this work. Here's the thing with these energy drinks, dude. You know, people go, hey, they're not good for you. Well, listen. Nothing is. You, 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 you geeks who drink like two cups of coffee every morning. What the hell's the difference between that and a five-hour energy shot, which is 200 milligrams of caffeine? It's the same shit, okay? Now, the problem is this. These are the ones I don't think are good for you. I don't, I don't think the, uh, the energy drinks that have like 280 grams of caffeine and also massive amounts of sugar, I think, though, I think that combination, that's going to kill you. I don't think the, uh, you know, the low-carb ones where it's just caffeine, how's that any different than drinking uh, a coffee in the morning? But the ones that like are just absolutely loaded with sugar and loaded with caffeine— I've had the the low carb caf or the sugar free ones before, and it's like you know kind of you know it's it's definitely an energy drink, but it's like you're just getting caffeinated like you would with coffee. But man, I once bought the wrong one. I got the one with the caffeine and the sugar, and dude, I thought I was gonna die. Like I thought I was gonna die. It's like how do I get the shit out of my system as fast as possible? It was, it was horrible. It tastes awful. Is that the one with sugar and caffeine you're you're raving about here? No, no this is the zero. I can't All right. listen. If I drank one of those green monsters, like they got one with like eyes on it that says "Unleash the Beast" or something, that that actually I don't know. That might be an alcoholic drink, but those th- that thing would put me under the table. Like there's like 400 calories of sugar in it and yeah. the caffeine. That'll no, kill those you. are terrible. Yeah, terrible. Not good for you. No, those are going to be at the bottom of the list if I ever even make it. But that's but, a shit that everyone drinks. Don't drink those. Don't drink those. They're not good yeah. for you. Next week, next week, I'm bringing in the bucked up. Do it. For the showdown. Is that also uh, low carb? Or is that yeah. uh, sugar free? Zero. And it's Zero. by Monster? No, it's by Bucked Up. <laughs> Bro, why don't we go in together and start an energy drink? It seems like they're a dime a dozen. Like, Flair had one for a that, while. That is that is exactly why you don't go in together. And no, we could do it, though, because we could promote it right. Like, we both actually have energy. So, you know, we... you know, <laughs> Yeah, tell me Rick Flair Do your have kettlebell energy. workouts on the time lapse and then chug one of the, your uh, filthy energies, and then I'll go up there and I'll do my thing in the morning time lapse, and I'll chug it. I mean, dude, we could sell these. I'm sure of it. I, I mean, I know I'm we d- do better than Ric Flair. I'm down to boof one on film if it's going to help the sales. Well, hey, let's talk. <laughs> Does that have to be a full can in in the can? Or... <laughs> All right. Can we talk about SmackDown? This was the best show in ages. This show was freaking uh, awesome. Because you know what? So too. This show had good wrestling, and I watched the end of this show, and I was like, son of a bitch. The fucking booking of this promotion over the last, like, man, they're fucking firing on all cylinders. The main event booking, I thought, was just incredible. And you know what's funny? So I'll, I'll tell you the funny story as we get to it, but let's get started. All right. So Randy Orton is actually the show opener here in Brooklyn, New York. This, I can't say, was the best thing I've ever seen. He's been embroiled in a battle with his former friend, Kevin Owens, over the last few weeks. Got attacked by him. He attacked him. He wants a match with him. Nick Aldis would not give him the match. He said it's not because he didn't want to, but because he couldn't because of orders from above. So Randy is about to go to the ring, make his entrance. But wait a minute. He walks by the gorilla position. And who happens to be sitting there but Triple H. He goes back, has some words with Triple H. He eventually goes down to the ring. He says he thinks he knows who he needs to talk to. And he calls down Triple H. Because he says if he didn't know any better, he'd think Triple H is protecting Randy Orton from him. I mean, Kevin Owens from him. So did you did you see the uh, alternate footage of this segment? 
like the uh, the close up of Triple H. Yeah, he's sitting there. That one. Yeah, they uh, they had. I think it was, it was on social media or whatever. It's where I saw it first. But they had a camera on Triple H at the gorilla position as Randy is doing his promo. So they didn't show on the actual SmackDown show. This he had to go to social media. But the funny thing about it is he's watching the monitor. He's got his he's got his spectacles on like he's six hundred years old, and you know you can you can hear what Randy's saying, and uh, Randy starts calling him out, and and Hunter it's like he's not overacting or anything. He's just kind of watching it. His brow is furrowed. He's like, mm, God damn it, and then Randy makes like the call out and everything, and in your imagination if you watch SmackDown. Well, it's Hunter going, hit my music, and he's going to storm down to the ring. Instead, he's sitting there watching the monitor, all pissed off, and then his fucking music just starts. And he's like, starts taking all of his stuff off. And I'm like, so who threw Hunter under the bus in storyline? Because he did not call for his music to be started. Who hit the music? Orton, Orton demanded he come out, and the music guy's like, oh, come out, Hunter, let's see it. And he hits the music, and Hunter's forced out there. But I, I, liked, uh, I liked the way that they showed the backstage stuff, because... Uh, you know, Hunter's Hunter's pretty good in in the acting department. He does he doesn't overact like some guys do. So Triple H comes out of the ring. He says, "Look, <laughs> he says, look, if you really want to talk to this this or talk about this, this isn't the place. We could have talked about it earlier, but you never show up to work on time." So Orton wants Triple H to say that he's been protecting Owens from Orton. Triple H says, "Look, in reality." I'm protecting you from Kevin Owens. He says that he's talked to Owens, and Owens really, truly believes this time that Randy and Cody betrayed him. And that he, after coming back from a long time, he doesn't want to put Randy in this situation. He wants to protect the Viper. A long time off. So Randy basically talked about how back in the day, the old schoolers, and old business man-to-man, he was able to convince Triple H, the cerebral assassin, to give him the match. And then Triple H left him with a warning that he needs to watch his back from this moment forward. Yeah, that was a little weird. <laughs> like, why can't we just sign the match? They're both, I don't know. It, it, was, it was an attempt. It wasn't my favorite thing on the show. I'm protecting you from Kevin Owens. He's just a Randy Orton who's like bigger than Brock Lesnar right now. It just is a multi-time, 14-time champion or whatever. I don't know. It, it was an attempt. We had Andrade El Idolo take on Carmelo Hayes in the match seven of the best of seven series, which went exactly as I would have expected with L.A. Knight as the guest ref who didn't want to be there in the first place. He's, he's wearing slacks, at, I guess they're slacks, and a leather vest. And he's wearing his championship belt and the ref shirt. And he, he looked like a ref that was cosplaying as Indiana Jones. You know what he looked like? Terrible. A fucking geek. And I mean that with all due respect. But, like, even the announcers are like, not sure I've ever seen a special referee wearing a championship belt out there before. And I'm like, yeah, because he's a geek. He's got his jeans on. He's got a watch the size of your fucking head on. He's got his his belt around his waist. And I'm like, the fuck are you? You're like an indie guy who won a belt for the first time. And you got to make that's... sure everybody knows that you're the champion right now. I'm like, gee, many Christmas. I think that's the point. I know. I think that's the But game. the problem is, like, if you look at him and everything he's wearing, it's like he's doing a douchebag character. Except he's a baby face. And then the finish was also like a heel finish. Yeah, are you sure he's doing a I'm baby face? I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be a baby face, but <laughs> he's like... He's definitely a douchebag. I mean, I think he's <laughs> trying to do the Steve Austin, like, you're still a heel, but, like, everybody loves you. But, like, Steve Austin never did this kind of stuff, where you're, like, a total geek. And, I don't know, man. It was just... <laughs> the match itself... Here's what I'll say about the match. You knew that L.A. Knight was going to screw it up, Okay. So I actually preferred what they did, which was they went maybe five minutes. They had a they, few cool spots. They did, yeah, but they it did was like a storyline from start to finish. You weren't invested in it as a match so that you would be more disappointed at the end. It was obvious what was going to happen, and that's what they did. So they didn't waste our time like they could have done. So I was fine with it. 
Well, I mean, they did waste our time. Well, they, they didn't waste our time in the sense of <laughs> they purposely hey, watch they this purposely goddamn wasted our time. Watch this goddamn match for twenty five minutes, then we're gonna fuck you. It was like it's six or seven. What what they did was cool. What they were allowed to do was good, of course. There was some confusion. A super kick by Hayes that caught Knight. Then Hayes hit the superplex into the cutter. He made the pin. La Knight pulls him out of the ring, throws him in the announce desk. He gets in the ring. Him and Andrade argue. Andrade swings at him, and rightfully so. But Knight ducked, hit the BFT. Hayes came in, went after him. Knight hit the BFT on him, too. He rang the bell, said, Yeah, to hell with game seven. I'm still the U.S. champ. What everybody's about is saying, L.A. Knight. Yeah. And even the announcers are like, I'm not sure that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's good. Yeah, they well, totally you knew what were, was going to happen. Yeah, you got you got you got basically you got a heel and a babyface wrestling, and a referee that's supposed to be a babyface but comes off as a heel, and the announcers are talking about what 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 a shitty guy. It was. <laughs> and this was a great show, everybody. Just hang on. Tiffany Stratton was back, and uh, Naya is like, "Hey, I hope you enjoyed your vacation." Tiffany says, "If she could have been there, she would have." Naya says, "Look, I need to get Naomi off my back." Tiffany says, oh, I'll take care of it. But Naya says, you know, I've already got somebody else. After beating Bailey last week, Candice LeRae is going to take care of it for me. And Candice comes in and says some stuff. Yeah, I liked I, – I, see, last week they, they had the replacement because Tiffany was out. And, you know, the replacement, Candice of all people, goes in and beats Bailey. And I was like – why did they do that? And then when they did this segment here, it made sense. It's it's Naya's way to belittle Tiffany again. Oh, well, I had another partner last week, and she beat Bailey. Something you could never do. And, of course, Tiffany's all sad. Yeah. Yeah. L.A. Knight was leaving the premises, and Aldis stopped him, got in his face. And he said, look, a crown jewel. He, he was not having L.A. Knight shit. Nick Aldis no. was like, listen, buddy, I don't know what the hell you think you're doing out there, but at Crown Jewel, you're going to face both these guys in a triple threat match. Nick Aldis also looks like Randy Orton-sized the oh, past he's, few he's weeks. He's a big dude, yeah. He was way bigger than L.A. Knight here, and, you know, of course they... L.A. Knight has no comeback. He just stands there looking mad. It's like, well, brother, you brought this on yourself, dude. What do you want? We had Candice LeRae, the reigning. And we got to eventually get to this. Hey, scam likely back off. I got, you know who called me the other day? Nuisance likely. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> wow. Never heard that like, one before. I should have answered it. <laughs> so LeRae is the, the reigning speed champion. First, first time singles meeting they mentioned between her and Naomi. Naomi, hey, did you notice Naomi rolled through on the wrist lock early and did a variation of the dummy sweep? I did not see that. Yeah. Wow. She rolled through, stuck her, stuck her feet between, between uh, Candice's heels, pushed her over. She then made a comeback later on, hit a oh, heat seeker. I know what you're talking about. I yeah. like that sweep. You know, you know how often I will actually get that stupid sweep on oh, people I, that I should know too. better? Yeah. It's a great move. Naomi made a nobody has any clue what the fuck we're no, talking. No, and it, I couldn't explain it anyway. But it's it's a it's a cool stupid it's, move that shouldn't work but does. If you ever get hit with a move called the dummy sweep, you could just imagine, you know, like what it looks like. Naomi made a comeback. There's another she's... one which is like not a sweep, but it's like so a person's on their back and they're trying to do like open guard or whatever. And so uh you know, they got their they got their hooks inside your your thighs or whatever. And so you kind of just kind of push them forward so their knees are on their chest and you're kind of just sitting like on their on their shins. And then as they push back, you just like push their knees and go to mount. Yeah, yeah. That works all the time. And it's so stupid. But I love those moves. Uh, Naomi made a comeback, hit a bulldog off the ropes, disaster kick for two. Larray hung her up in the corner, hit a neck breaker in the ropes, Naomi stopped her with a kick, but then Indy posted Naomi, threw her into the ring. Bailey's music hit. 
I don't know if she was back there telling him to hit the music. I don't know if her music just hit and she was on cue. But she ran down, attacked Indy. This allowed Naomi to hit a bubble bomb. A little foreshadowing there. And get the pinfall victory. Mm. So it also set up, I believe it'll be Candice and Indy against Naomi and Bailey. Sure. Right? Because next week, Nia Jax will go face-to-face with Liv Morgan ahead of Crown Jewel. Cody and Gunther then had their face-to-face in which Gunther's music cut off Cody's big, whoa, as he was on the ropes posing. Gunther got in the ring, said, look, you know, I actually liked what he said right off the bat. He was like, it was out of place for you to mention your daughter last week. She has nothing to do with this. This is about who's the better champion and who's the better wrestler. Said Cody's too concerned with trying to be the quarterback of the company, live up to others' expectations. Gunther asked what his real motivation was to be the champion. Cody pointed to the people in the crowd. He said he's proud to be dramatic. Look at his dad. Look at his family. Of course he's dramatic. He's proud to be a messy king. Cody asked Gunther where he was the past few days while Cody's been at Allegiant Stadium in Vegas doing media for WrestleMania 25. Gunther says he's every bit the champion Cody is, and he gets the same requests. What does he think? They don't want him there? But the difference is he has the guts to say no. No to the bosses, no to the media, no to the charities, and especially no to all of the fans. He says once Cody says no, he's no longer the servant of the people, and his story is done. He calls Cody a gutless champion. Cody starts talking about guts real quick and then fires the first shot on Gunther, punches him before Ludwig Kaiser runs down and makes a save. And Gunther and Kaiser double teamed Cody, hit him with a lariat before Randy Orton ran down to make the save. I thought this was a good segment. I think they did, did a, I think I. they did a they did a talking segment, I think, on Raw. And it was like fine, but I mean there was it was nothing like when it was over, it was just over. It was very generic. I thought this one was significantly better. I thought they both did a great job. And uh Gunther I thought was phenomenal. I think Gunther he came off this match. Oh, I think so too. There's no reason for Cody to. Gunther came off so smug. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like he's become he such an right awesome talker. Like, he probably should be most improved on promos for, like, 2024. I mean, when he first came out and he goes, so, Cody, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> the people were so angry. I was like, this guy's awesome. He's great. There was a Bloodline video package. And then we had all three GMs in the back. Aldis, Pierce, and Ava from NXT are there to inform Jade and Bianca Belair that there will be a fatal four-way tag team title match at Crown Jewel, and they will defend against the teams Piper and Chelsea, Io and Kyrie, and Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson. What I what I, I don't know if it's the way they film it or what it is, but like, if you ain't got nothing to do, go watch Hunter the video of Hunter in the gorilla position. And the way that he reacts to Randy Orton's promo, which is that he doesn't. He doesn't overact. And then watch the reaction of the other teams when they're announced as facing these guys in a fatal four-way. It's the most preposterous, overacting, ridiculous high school play type stuff. I, I don't know why. I don't know what it is, dude. But, like, they're, you know, half of them are like, huh? What? Huh? And the other half are like, ah! They're all just randomly yelling or whatever. Like, why do they do that? Just say, okay, cool. I can't wait. I don't know. I don't, like, what are Jade and Bianca doing? They're, they're, to me, they're just coming off as, like, heels. What, because they'll face anybody? I don't, I don't know. They're fighting champions. Are they? Yeah. I guess. I mean, DIY took on the Motor City Machine Guns. This is a number one contenders match for the World Tag Team Championships. Shelly and Gargano go to a stalemate wrestling each other. They talked about the history between these two. Basically, 
they're like mirror images of each other in a lot of ways. The machine guns got chomped to the floor. They hit dual kicks. Saban went for a dive, but Gargano cut him off with a slingshot spear. Saban fired up. He hit a tornado DDT. He and Shelly hit a number of double team moves, including some wild. Shelly did a flatliner to Gargano, who was sitting on top of Chompa's shoulders, who was on his knees in the middle of the ring. And Saban came off the top of the missile drop kick and dropped them both. DIY had control later on. They set up for Meet Me in the Middle, but Shelly took Chompa. Gargano inadvertently landed a super kick on Chompa. And the machine guns hit the skull and bones. Neckbreaker splash on Gargano and got the win to become the number one contenders to the tag team titles. You could see afterwards Ciampa. They talked about him being the black heart previously on commentary. And then after, at the end of this match, he was yelling at Gargano. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him make a heel turn again soon. Well, all I know is this match was freaking awesome. This match well, yes. was great. At the end, I was kind of like, "That was it, though." We don't. It, well, it was short, but it made sense. I'll get to that in a moment. But like, I, I just thought these guys are all so great, and the match was so good. And what I really like is, you know, this is a great example when people go, "Oh, it's exactly the same as it was with Vin." No, it's not. It's totally different. First off, you'd never have Shelly and Gargano wrestling each other. Not in a million years. Not only they that. wouldn't talk about it. Not only this. that, but they did like a match you would see on any other show anywhere in the world. They didn't do a slowed down WWE version of their match. They had a great wrestling match. And literally, when the match starts, the announcers start going on and on about Alex Shelley. And, you know, to a lesser degree, Saban, but it's mostly Shelley. And they're they're talking about how... Man, this guy has been all over the world. He's wrestled the best guys in the world. He's won tag team championships everywhere. He's a mentor to guys like Johnny Gargano when they first started in the early 2000s. They're like pushing this guy as like a pro wrestling legend, like a Hall of Famer that's finally getting his big break in WWE. And I'm like, God damn. <laughs> And, like, you know, Corey's talking about how, man, he used to sleep on my floor. Corey, Corey shines in stuff like this because he would have so many little quips. He's like, me and Shelly spent many nights talking about how we didn't think Gargano was going to make it out of Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was, this was just, like, everything about this was great. So then I'm going to do a quick spoiler here, okay? So they do this match, and they're the number one contender to the tag titles. I'm thinking, okay, Crown Jewel or whatever. So... And by the way, keep in mind, like, I'm so out of the loop on the weekends, I'm thinking this on Monday. I knew nothing. So, oh, I mean, I knew going in, and I still, it, I didn't. I was, it still affected me. You know what I mean? So, knowing, knowing, well, both hold on, these don't guys, spoil it. Having yet. worked with both don't these guys. Don't spoil it yet. So, I'm watching this, and they win, and I'm thinking, okay, we've got a tag team title match coming up on pay per view. I wonder what they're going to do, because, like, eh, Machine Gun's probably going to win on pay per view, but, you know, they've won this match. And so then the bloodline starts coming down to the ring. And somehow, I didn't know anything that happened, but I did know that Jay and Jimmy reunited on the show. So I'm waiting for them to come out for the main event segment. They get in the ring, and they're having the face off. And they come back, and Nick Aldis is in the ring, and he goes, I am not going to let this brawl happen here tonight. And so as he's saying that, I'm looking at Shelly and Saban, okay? And they just had a match, and and they're like in great shape like physically they're in great shape i thought god damn these guys have been around forever like i remember alex shelley in 2002 2003 tna like god damn they're still in great sh how old are these guys and so i decided to google how old are shelley and saban and i think shelley is now like 41 years old and saban's yep. like 42 and i'm thinking fuck i am older than fucking dirt because Alex Shelley was on the show years ago, and he talked about how, you know, when I was 12 years old, I used to read Figure Four Weekly. I got it in the mail when I was 12. And back then, I felt like so fucking old that a 12-year-old had been reading Figure Four. Now here he is. He's 41 fucking years old. I'm like, Jesus. But as I'm looking at their age, it has a little blurb, you know, the, the opening blurb, and it says... Alex Shelley is currently one half of the WWE Tag Team Championships. 
And I was like, what? No, he's not. Who the fuck edited this? And I thought, what? Wait, what? And so as I'm looking at this, Nick Aldis goes, we're not, you guys, these guys have worked too hard to have a tag team championship match tonight. I went, what? And Alex Shelley goes, no. If they want it tonight, right here, right now, let's do it. I went, what? So they announced the fucking match. And now my brain is like exploding. I'm like, because now like everything is starting to fit together. I'm like, they're doing the tag title match tonight. Wikipedia says they become the champions. Wait a second. The fucking bloodline cost Braun Breaker, or cost Jay the, the, the title against Braun Breaker. God damn, the bloodline's got titles. It's all starting to come together in my head. I'm like, no fucking way. And sure enough, they do this match. And god damn, it is exactly, exactly what they should have done. The fucking heels try to interfere. Out comes Roman Reigns. The place goes fucking nuts. He brawls to the back with Jimmy, and, you know, they, they head on back. And then, of course, it's like everything tied together perfect. Here comes Jimmy. Oh, my God, he's going to screw the bloodline. Alex Shelley and Chris Saban are going to win the fucking WWE. I was like, no way. This was fucking perfect. It was perfect. And, like, they got all the guys out of the way, so we still kind of got a match. And they did win. Like, they hit their move and everything and won. And, man, the place goes fucking crazy when they win these tag team titles. And they're, like, celebrating in the ring. They're all excited. And they didn't make it all about the bloodline. They, like, they won the titles. And, you know, Jey Uso helped. He cost the bloodline the tag team titles his revenge. But, like, the the... The guns celebrate. They show a replay of them hitting their big moves. They spend like a good three minutes on their celebration. They go to the back holding up the titles. They didn't make it all about everything else. They gave them their moment. And then finally when they get backstage, then Jimmy slowly comes out from the backstage area. His brother is in the ring. They both realize we got to do this together. We got to take out these phony bloodline fuckers and they hug and they're crying and the place is going crazy i was like holy shit the booking of this promotion is fucking incredible right now this was such a great final like 45 minutes of smackdown i was like holy shit it was awesome yeah agreed the best part and like Ah, uh, as I was saying, as somebody who's worked with, I mean, a lot of these guys, honestly, but, you know, I've been at, I can't even tell you how many independent shows with Alex Shelley, and to watch him operate, not only in the ring, but backstage with a crew, uh, with the other workers, the ability that he has to help other wrestlers, and, I mean, I cannot overstate how influential he has been not only in on the in-ring style but also backstage and getting people opportunities as well and he um, is the nicest guy and he is the smartest guy and like he when he was i think it was in tna when he was finally making some pretty decent money it was like he invested in going back to school and he got his degree and he was doing therapist, pers- yeah physical therapy yeah so there was a point where nick aldis says he goes I am. You guys have been all around the world, beating some of the best tag teams ever. I am not going to allow you to take this match at anything less than one hundred percent. And then Shelley stopped him, and Shelley said something very important. He said, "Those tag team titles are the most important thing on the planet to us." And you often hear somebody say something like that in the wrestling ring. But I guarantee you that was not hyperbole. I guarantee you that those titles meant more than anything else to Shelly and Saban at that point. And to see them, you know, to see them be the, the best tag team in the world, to be recognized as the best tag team on the planet after all of this time, you deserve it. 
Not to mention, dude, they beat the Bloodline. It was in a main event segment. You had Roman Reigns out there, all of the biggest stars in the company. God damn. This was a moment, like, this was a moment for the fucking ages. I was so happy for them. God damn. What a SmackDown. It was amazing. Yeah. Fucking amazing. So there you go, everybody. Well, listen, we got to wrap it up. I got to get ready for Observer Live. But I give that uh, I give that show two thumbs up, and uh, and we'll see what happens tonight's we'll raw. See, we'll see how many thumbs up Al Bundy versus Big Bad Mama from Married with Children gets next week. I guess so. Well, we're here every Monday, everybody. Myself and Filthy Tom Lawler. If you happen to be listening to this show for free, you can. Uh, oh wait a minute! I'll be out of town next Monday. Well, I guess not next Monday. <laughs> Hell of a way to interrupt that plug. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can hear this show and 84 shows every month as part of a subscription, either at WrestlingObserver.com, where you can get the podcasts and 15,000 archive shows and newsletters, or we've got Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts, all of which are just $9.99 per month. And the Spotify address, just go to F4WOnline.com slash Spotify. Apple Podcasts is f4wonline.com slash Apple, and YouTube is f4wonline.com slash YouTube. And the YouTube subscription, you can also watch these shows live. So check out any of those, everybody, and, uh, and sign up. And that's it. We'll talk to you again after a while.